So if you have an HP Z240 and you want to put this into a nice case and make this into a great gaming computer, then you definitely don't want to miss this video and watch it. Because in this video, I'm going to show you how to take this motherboard CPU combo that came out of this HP Z240 that we have on the floor over here, get rid of these errors, and make this your next new gaming computer. So we need to find another budget build to do. I've done Lenovo's, I've done Dell's, and the most popular one is the Dell Optiplex um, 3020s, 10, the 70s, the 90s, uh, the 920s, 790s, stuff like that, and even the Precisions like T1700 and 1600, those are the most popular one. And it's gone so far in that community as people have gone and made adapters just to make those work very easily. Well, as great as those computers are, and they're still great, I mean, Intel 2nd, 3rd, and 4th gen putting i7s or Xeons in it, time is progressing and we need something faster. Newer games, the minimum requirements right now is I've seen some of them are starting to pick up at 4th gen Intels and guys, we're getting kind of close. So we need to find the next bang for the buck that's going to work and that we can do a case swap. Now office PCs are the greatest, probably best bang for the buck that you can find. These people take these computers, they're usually run with i3, Xeon 5.7s, they're real dusty, they're crusty, companies upgrade to newer ones and these are tossed up or set up for recycle or auctioned out they can get from. Uh, typically these you can get them if you know of auction places like local schools, local municipalities in my area, they typically auction off a lot of these of maybe 10 to 20 of them, typically like for 100 or 200 dollars pop in some good CPUs, low profile video card, and you got a good gaming computer. Or better yet, if you could figure out how to crack the code and do the case swap, then you really got something that's gonna really make you some great bang for the buck, or better yet, make you a nice custom PC. So, what flavor do we have today? We have the HP Z240. That's right guys, the HP Z240. Looking on the eBay and the interweb and all that good stuff, these things typically are going for about a hundred to about a hundred and fifty dollars. It's high because everything going on in the economy, but at one time you were actually able to get these for sixty. And if you find them for auctions or thrifts, you could probably get them for around the fifty to sixty dollar price range. So if you see one of these, you definitely want to get them, and you'll see why in this video. Now with these, they are Intel sixth gen and seventh gen. They're the Intel C two thirty six, which were released in I believe it's September of two thousand fifteen, and Xeons, of course the greatest bang for the buck for it. DDR4 support, SSDs, all that good stuff. And guys, they perform quite well. But now here's the question. How do we take this and put it into a, a modern case? Well, that's what we're going to do. So in this series, we're going to do a part one where I show you and tell you and break down everything that you need to do to put it into a modern case. And then in part two, we make a nice gaming computer out of it. So let's go ahead, let's open her up, and let's talk about what you're going to need to do. All right, so now that we've got the camera angle switched, let's go ahead and let's open it up. So typically, I'm going to give you a full disclaimer on this. Number one, I've only done this for the Z240. I'm sure there are other motherboards that work for this, but if you have the Z240 motherboard or if you have another series that uses the exact same similar motherboard, then this will work. This is very easy. It's really not that hard to do, and if I could do it, anybody can do it. So the first thing we need to do is just take everything out over here that we're going to need. So what are we going to need from this? We're going to need our hard drive if it comes with one. We're going to need SATA cables, why not, because they're there and they're cheap. Your motherboard and your CPU cooler, and we'll talk about that in just a sec. So I've already gone ahead and I've already started disassembling this, and this is pretty much all taken out. And this power supply, guys, you can't use it. I mean, if you're going to pop this in another case, you're going to need a new power supply. And we'll talk about that and how to overcome this feat. Outside of that, you don't need anything else. Like the Dell Optiplexes, unless you bought the adapters, you had to kind of splice some wires or other things. You don't need to do that with this. And this is what makes it great. Little ingenuity, and you got a good gaming computer. So just to kind of give you a just briefly, we go ahead and we just take this out. All right. Once you take that out, just pop this thing up over here. You'll have several screws on the motherboard, and all you need to do is just take out these screws. Once everything is unplugged, like I said, unplug everything. Once you take out this motherboard, you don't need anything else. Go ahead and slide the motherboard out nice and carefully. Try not to scratch it up or jack it up or anything. And there you go. Motherboard is out. And that's pretty much all you need besides the drives and your SATA cables. Now, something to keep in mind, the rear I.O. for this, you're not going to be able to use it. 
unfortunately they kind of have it stickered or welded but it's not the end of the world because this is behind the case so you won't see it I mean if you could come up with a way in 3d print it that would be ideal but you're not gonna have the rear IO so don't worry about that once you're done with this go ahead take this chuck it to the side recycle it do whatever you want to do mod it I don't know I might have another project lined up for this but do whatever you need to do and kind of get rid of it so the other thing that you want to do is make once you get the motherboard out get out your mechanical hard drive because this is a one terabyte this is guys this is going to be your gaming drive unless you want to make this your main drive but this is where you're going to put all your games on so we're going to take this out and we're going to pair this with our solid state drive so this just slides right out pull into two tabs go ahead and slide these right out over here guys one terabyte hard drive other than that we don't need it we can't use the dvd drive because it's kind of proprietary to this type setup unless you have a case that fits this but outside of that you really don't need anything else like i said before take out your cables saves you money now another thing you can do which i don't find the purpose or the point of it is on this the motherboard has actually power for the sata you can use that if you want if you want to go for a cleaner cable management type deal i mean i don't know I've seen people use it. We don't because we're changing the power supply, so we have really no use for this. But that's an option you do have if, I don't know, if you want to do it. Okay, so we got the motherboard out, and let's talk about our options, what adapters we're going to need, and how we can make this work. So let's talk about the first things, CPU cooler. The stock CPU cooler that comes up with it actually works out pretty good. But the issue they run into is that the screws to mount this in are part of the case and, well, you can't take them out and reuse them. What I have done is I usually get like a nut, usually plastic ones from local hardware store, bring this with you, find the pitch that works for it, the thread pitch, I don't know what it is offhand, and I'm able to reuse it. Kind of save you a buck or two. The other option is, is because there's nothing fancy about it, I keep these old Intel CPU coolers lying around when people upgrade them. I just keep them and... I use that. Uh, you can upgrade to a Noctua, Be Quiet, I mean anything you want. You can put any type of CPU cooler that you want in here. It's just regular standard mounting, nothing fancy about it. So that's your option for there. Now, next thing, let's talk about your power supply. So if you're gonna swap out into a better case, you're gonna need a power supply. You can't use that little square Mickey Mouse power supply because well, number one, it doesn't have enough juice and number two, do you really wanna ghetto rig that and mess up your build? And number three, you want to put a nice video card in this. If you're going to go this far, you're probably going to put a decent video card, if you can find one, into it. So the first adapter that you're going to need is this. I got this on the old Amazon. This was like, I think, $15. I'll put a link below to what it is. And this is what converts your power on here to regular 24 pin for your power supply. So all you're going to do with this, no cutting, no splicing, just go ahead, put it into the white port right over here. Now the black one is what we talked about earlier where it has that SATA power. Plug it into this white or it's probably beige. Is that beige? Yeah, that's probably beige. Plug it into that one and then this one is going to go into the white connector right over here. You're done. Up here you have your CPU power connector. That will plug in just like normal. And then this goes into your 24 pins. So let's kind of take these two and temporarily marry them together. Let's make sure this is not powered up because that would not be good. And then all you got to do, boom, done. Guys, that's it. Now you can use any power supply you want. Any, any. I get asked this question all the time. What power supply can I use after doing any type of case swap, whether it's Dell, Lenovo? Guys, use whatever one you want. Don't matter. Just don't use one that's going to set your computer on fire. That would be no bueno, no bueno. So that's what you need to do as far as powering up. Now let's talk about the front USB errors. So now the next issue that you will run into is once you do this, just like Dell, it's going to give you like the front, uh, front USB, front USB 1, front USB 2 is not working. What it's referring to is these two over here. This is your USB 3.0 right over here in the blue, and this is your USB 2.0. The way they designed this is that there's a signal switch and there's a ground switch, and we got to figure out how to short it. Well, how do we do it? Thank you so much for asking. I'm going to show you how to do it. There's two ways to do it. There's the easiest way, and then there's the more practical, let's do this right way. So the easiest way to do it is, is I've been able to figure out what the pinouts for this and this is. If you're not worried about having your front USB 3.0 or your front USB 2.0, this is the way you want to do it. And let me show you. So first thing first, let me pull up my diagram right over here, okay? 
So this is my diagram, and if you look, it has, for the USB 3.0, I have 10 pins across on the top and the bottom. The little square is actually going to be the one that's empty and not populated. So if you look over here, and this is making it as simple as I can, from left to right, pin at the end, right over here, skip to, one, two, and the pin right over here, and kind of look at this diagram carefully, these are the two pins that you need to short out. Well, how do you short it out? You jumper them. What you're going to do is you're going to take a jumper cable like this, which you can buy these at the Amazon. I think I paid like a couple of dollars for it. They're not expensive at all, and they give you like a crap ton of them. You grab some of these, and what it is is it's the female to female for these front pin connectors right over here. So I have one. And what you're going to do is you're going to jumper, and let's see if we can get this in the camera, pin all the way over here on the right. And it fits in. You're going to skip one and two, go into the left next to it, and get another pin in there. So now you have your two pins, and this will short it out. There you go. So like I said, on the top row, you're going to go all the way to the end, jump that one, skip two, jump that one. And then what you can kind of do is put a little bit of hot glue gun, because this is loose, because these are smaller pins, and that will hold that in place. Okay. Then the next thing that you want to do, and let's go ahead and get my next jumper pin, is deal with this yellow one over here, your USB 2.0. So now, here's my other paper diagram, and hopefully you guys can see it. So looking at it just like it is on the motherboard, you have the blank, which is the top over here, 7531, and you have 108642. So I brought this out over here to kind of show you guys real quick, but when you plug it in, if you look, the pin on the bottom over here is blank there's nothing in there so what they did was HP has actually considered that their signal pin so you take that signal pin right over here and you jump it to the pin next to it to it's a ground once you do that which is real simple using the little jumper jumpers over here this and this once you do that it's jumped then you can plug in your front audio right over here and plug in your panel connector, which we'll talk about that in just a second, in a little bit, and you're good to go. So by doing these two right over here, this thing will boot up, you won't get the errors, and you're good to go. The only thing is, is that you lose your front I.O. And I'm actually going to show you a little trick on how to get these working with your front I.O. So keep watching, stay tuned. But it's very simple, and you won't have those errors on that. The audio doesn't require anything special or specific. All you need to do is plug it in over here and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and let's show you the other way to do this, which requires a, a little more finesse, a little more work, but it's still very doable. All right, so for now, for some of the use that just want to have the front I.O. working, here's how we're gonna do it. So I just bought this. This is not to um, show you the way to do it or anything like that. Well, I just bought this and you don't have to have this. In fact, I actually bought a low profile one. Why the heck did I do that? Now I can't use it for anything. But anyways, but I bought this and what all you're going to do over here is if you see, remember what I talked about in our diagram, and let's go ahead and pull that up right over here. If you looked in our diagram, all we need to do is jump this one and jump this one. And it's really easy. So we're going to pretend this is the one on the case because that's the one that you're going to modify. And we're going to get one of these jumper pins that I talked about. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the pin from the plastic connector around it on one of them and then cut the other end over here. And I'll show you. All right. So we just took this out just like that. You just get like a little pin, pull it out. And now we have the pin we need. So what we're going to do is, and we're just pretending that this is the one that's inside your case, we're going to slide it into the bottom one right over here. Now the orientation is important on this, so make sure you line it up accordingly which I already almost messed up my orientation. So kind of slide that in. Make sure it locks in place, which we're good to go. Now typically, I have found that I usually have to push the tabs down just a little bit just to kind of make sure it cooperates. It only goes in one way. So we have the little blank over here, and on the bottom we have that connector right over there. And it's kind of just like those two pins we told us. Now, if you look next to it, there's a black cable, which is right over here, which is our ground cable. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take this cable and we're going to need to cut it and splice it into here and make sure all these are spliced together. 
So let me go ahead, do this off camera and show you how it works. Okay, so now what I did was I went ahead and I took that black wire next to that open spot where we added this pin over here and I just cut it in half. Went ahead and I just kind of opened up the little sleeve right over here. I don't know if you guys can see this and just twisted them together. So now this is where controversy and people will disagree with how I'm doing this, but guys, my soldering gun is broken. So, and just for the point that I need to want to show you guys on how to do this, this is the way we're going to do it. So now what I typically do, well, what I would have done if my soldering gun was working is I would take these two wires over here, just like this, and I would put them together and I would solder these wires together. So I'm soldering the new one that we added to the one that's on the port side of the cable. So it's going to be the black or yet better yet, the one that was connected to the pin next to the pin we had. So we go ahead and we add this and this is just pretty much following that diagram. And what I'm going to do for the simple fact that this is all I have is I'm going to use a butt connector. Ideally, I don't recommend this. Um, I'm more big on soldering, but my soldering gun's not working. Go figure. And let's go ahead and let's crimp this. Okay. All right, make sure it's give it a little good tug. And I'm gonna kind of do the same thing over here. And this works. I've done it this way before. Like I said, I'm more looking for a cleaner look on it, but for the simple fact, just to show you guys, this does work. And this is another option you can do. Okay, slide that in there. Once that is slid in there, just kind of hold it in place and crimp everything together, which, all right, good connection, all that good stuff. Now, typically what I'll do is on this part over here, I would just tape this right over here with some black tape, and there you go. So now, if you've done this to the case, this will allow you to plug it in over here, your front USB 2.0, it will get rid of the error, and you'll have your front USB 2.0 ready to go. So um, we'll keep using this, we'll clean this up, and then when we're done with this, I'll show you guys everything and it working. So let's go ahead and let's show you the next fun one to be, is gonna be our USB 3.0. So now, the next thing that we wanna do is get our front USB 3.0 working and also defeating that error as well. So typically, I have found this, and number one, the good thing about this adapter is that it kinda, gives you guys a visual representation of how it works but honestly this is probably the best way I figured out how to do this so typically USB 3.0 is in a lot of the cases that I bought and use they usually just have a flat connector and you really can't get access to these individual wires and cut them and splice them as you need well I found this one on the Amazon this was 10 bucks I don't know I really need to remember these prices but this was like 10 bucks and what this allows me to do is it gives me access to all those pins so remember when we talked about and let's pull this one up over here Remember we talked about we need to jump the pin all the way over here and this is the representation of how it is laid out on the board. We need to jump this one and this one. So by jumping these two, we could plug in our USB 3.0, the front works, and then we don't get that error. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pin over here and this is actually a little easier than I actually thought it was gonna be. And make sure you have the right orientation because you have one that has no pin on the bottom, which is the blank spot over here. So make sure you have the right orientation. You're gonna take this wire right over here, skip two, and make sure you're on the top row. So we're gonna take these two wires and we just need to jump them together. So now there's two ways to do this. And like I said, if I had a soldering gun, that would be bea beautiful, but I don't have my soldering gun and it's not working. And anyways, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut these, we're gonna butt connect them together, wrapping them up with tape. And this is just for the video, just so you guys see it. There is a cleaner and better way to do it. Guys, soldering is great, but yeah. Anyways, so we're going to jump these two together, cut them, splice them all together so they're all running within the same circuit, the same thing that's running over here to the front, and we'll be able to use our USB 2.0. So let's go ahead and let's do that real quick. All right, so now we have the connectors, which is the one all the way to the right, skip two, and the one over there. So it'd be one and four. I don't know what the exact number ones would be. We'd be able to plug it in, just put a little black tape over here, and I'll actually clean this and make this look a lot better. And then this part over here, the cool thing about it is, is that once you've done this, when you're ready to transplant this into your new case, all you need to do is plug in your USB 3.0 into here, you're ready to go, no errors. So now let's move on to the final step of what you'll need to do the swap, which is the front panel, power button, all that stuff, and then we'll fire it up, and I'll show you guys that we are ready to put this into a new case.
All right, and the million dollar question is, is how do I turn it on? Because if you look, uh, do I still have it over here? Nope, I don't. Well, if you look, the um, all the connectors are kind of intertwined for the power, the hard drive LED, and the power LED. So how do we turn it on? Well, let's take a look at my magical diagram. So this is my diagram, and this is exactly how you're going to look at it on the motherboard if you take the motherboard this way and you flip it this way. So pretty much, if this is my torso this way, the rear of the... Um, I.O. of the motherboard is going to be that way and the connector is going to be right over here. So if you look, we have the white connector over here which is for our power and we have this one which is for our power button and our HD LED. So we have a series of 10 and then in the middle on the fifth one on the bottom row all five are accounted for but the middle one on the top row over here is actually missing one and that's kind of our reference point. Now if we look at my diagram over here we have 10 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you look, the power switch, and this is going to be positives are going to be on the left, which is going to be towards the PCI Express ports over here, and the negatives are going to be towards the top over here where there's pretty much nothingness. So if you look, we have one and two, uh, three, and this is our blank. After on the bottom row, the ones next to it, this one and this one, is going to be your power switch. The one next to it after that, this one and this one, is going to be your hard drive LED. And the one right up here is going to be your power LED. So then the blank one. Now, what I did, just to kind of give you guys a visual representation of how this is going to look, we're going to take this right over here. And our red is going to be our hard drive LED, which we determine is going to be on the bottom. So make sure that we have the positive with the positive right into over here. The next one is going to be our power LED, well, our power switch, which is going to be right next to it. And then our power LED is going to be right up here. And I don't know how well this shot comes in, but hopefully my diagram gives you a better representation of how this works. Which will go right up there. And right up over here. And there you go. If you look, as you can see, we have all our connectors. Now, the only thing it's not accounted for is our reset switch. Maybe it's there. I don't know. But a lot of cases I see don't have it. And, well, who really uses the reset switch anymore? Just unplug it or something. But that's what we're going to use to power this thing on. So now that we've gone over the front USB, the fan, the power, let me go ahead put this together on a test bench real quick, show you guys booting it up with no errors, and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, so we got our USB plugged in, and we have our adapter over here, which even though it doesn't have the USB 3.0 ports for it, it's still grounded right over here to the signal port, so it'll work just as fine. And then if we plug in a USB 3.0 right over here, it'll work just fine. So let's go ahead, let's power up, and if we look, we got all our power connectors as we talked about before. Here goes nothing. Kind of helps if I turn that on, right? All right, here we go. Let's watch this thing boot up. And as you will see, we're not going to have any errors. And there you go. We're loading up into Windows. We are booted. No front USB errors, no CPU fan errors, no chassis fan errors, no errors whatsoever. And as you look, we have our power LED, we have a hard drive LED, and our power button, which we'll press over here and demonstrate, shuts down our computer and turns it off just like any other computer. Another thing to note, does the USB port work after we did that? Let's go ahead, let's pop her in. And this is my Windows 10 installation, so we're going to go ahead, pop it in, and as you can see, there you go. It works. So guys, I hope this helps you out. As you can see, this is actually really easy to do. I mean, we probably spend maybe $15, $20 in adapters. I forget how much I spend for them, but we're able to put a better power supply in here, put a better graphics card, get rid of these annoying errors that are going to pop up with your USB 2.0 and your USB 3.0 and turn this into a gaming computer. So now she is ready for us to transplant into another case, which I have right over here, so you definitely want to watch part two of this video where we turn this into an awesome gaming computer. 
guys this like i said very simple very easy anybody can do it don't be afraid to do it if you don't want to worry about doing this connectors or buying this just get a bunch of these and all you need to do is jump the pins like i tell you and if you're not worried about the front usb or the front io and being able to plug stuff in there don't worry about it just do it that way but if you really want it all you got to do is just do some quick easy splicing i use these butt connectors because they're cheap i had them lying around and my soldering gun doesn't work and as you can see everything worked fine so guys stay tuned for part two of this video we're definitely going to kick this computer up a notch and we'll be able to sell it get some great bang for the buck some great performance out of it and you don't want to miss it guys comment down below let me know your thoughts do you think i missed anything how do we do on this are we ready is there anything i could have clarified any better i definitely want to know and if you like this video hit the like button subscribe if you're not and as always we'll see what we come up with next